Hello everyone. I welcome you all once again to my series of lecture that is understanding pharmaceutical science with Dr. Hari Haran. So today we are going to discuss about the media needed for industrial fermentation. Especially I can tell that this lecture is totally dedicated of understanding the basic concept how to design an industrial fermentation media. What are the various components that are to be present in the media? And what is the importance of each and every components to be present in the media? So this lecture will provide an in-depth about the uh, how to design a media and how to make an efficient production of the metabolites. So let us go one by one. So first we will understand a basic about the fermentation. So if you see I have already discussed about the basic about fermentation in my previous lecture. So if you see the term fermentation is derived from the Latin term called as fervere meaning to boil. It is simply a boiling appearance of a fermentation process. So this boiling appearance how it has been occurred is due to the uh, yeast which has grown into a malt extract during the anaerobic uh, condition for the production of alcohol. So to produce alcohol so the yeast has been put into a uh, malt grinds which is majorly rich in sugar. So what happened is in that anaerobic condition the sucrose that is especially the sugar which is follows the glycolytic pathway and forms the pyruvate and in the anaerobic condition it leads to the production of alcohol as a secondary metabolite. So during this process what happened is it has produced a very oxidized product called as carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide has evolved during this process so it looks like a boiling appearance. So that is why the name fervere has been given. So, but actually the definition of a fermentation, we can define that fermentation is a process. It is a metabolic process because what happened in this process is that the microorganism will conceive the substrate which is supplied in the form of a media. So, the microorganism consume this substrate and it forms the product by means of its metabolic pathway. So, the microorganism takes the substrate then it undergoes a metabolic product and forms a product. So this process we call as a fermentation process. So basically it is a metabolic or biochemical process of a microorganism that leads to the production of a product. So this product can be of two types. One it may be a primary metabolite or second it may be a secondary metabolite. So if you see certain examples like primary metabolite, example is an amino acid, glutamic acid. So the primary metabolites are generally needed for the further growth of that microorganism. Whereas the secondary metabolite uh, such as an antibiotic or the solvent like an ethanol, it does not need for the growth of the microorganism but it supports for getting the food material from its surrounding because of this secondary metabolite activity. But this metabolite has its own industrial importance. So by this fermentation process we collect this metabolite at a particular stage then we will supply into the market. So the core objective of today's lecture is we are going to understand about the fermentation media. So what is meant by a fermentation media? then how we can design the fermentation media, what are the criteria of this fermentation media, then each and every components of the media and its importance. So let us start first with our uh, basic introduction. So since all cells including the microorganism requires certain elements as a nutrient from outside for its survival. So like that the microorganism will take certain materials like water, then energy source in the form of a carbon and other certain major nutrients like nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, then certain mineral elements in the form of a minor element or trace element for its growth. So during its growth it performs the metabolic process and forms a product to us. But our concern is the designing of this fermentation media. So to design a fermentation media for a particular product and from a particular organism we need a detailed understanding of the process. So what is the elemental composition of the microorganism? 
what are the nutrients requirement of the microorganism for its growth and what is the nature of the product formation in the metabolic pathway. So, this detailed investigation is needed for production of a suitable medium for us. So, each individual fermentation process will be studied in depth before we starting to design a fermentation media. So, before getting the design of a fermentation media, so we keep certain criteria so that we have we can make the media in a perfect manner. So, the first criteria is that the purpose of the media in such a manner that it should produce a maximum yield of the product or biomass whatever it may be for each gram of the substrate we are added in the media. So, our core objective is that we need the maximum yield of the product. For example, in an alcohol fermentation we need a maximum yield of the ethanol. So, from where ethanol is obtained is from a particular substrate glucose. So, from the sugar we get the ethanol. So, each gram of sugar how much ethanol we are getting is becomes a basic criteria for us. Second is that based on this we also need a maximum concentration of the product or biomass. So, that the concentration increases we can get a maximum yield. So, in other way if you see that what happened is that if we are giving a substrate and we are getting a maximum yield after 10 days it is nothing uh, it is a loss of a business if you see in a fermentation perspective point. What we need is we need a maximum yield in a short duration. So, if we need a maximum yield in a short duration means our media should be designed in such a manner that it should have a maximum rate of product formation. That means, we need a maximum yield, maximum concentration and that to happen at a faster rate. So, that is the third criteria we have to concern before designing the media. And the fourth one is our objective is not only producing a maximum yield of the product, but we also does not want a undesired product. So, the media should be designed in such a manner that it should favor the desired product in a maximum amount, but it has to produce only a minimum yield of the undesired products. For example, if I need an alcohol, so my objective is that it has to produce alcohol not to produce an another products during the process. So, we need a maximum yield, but we need a minimum yield of the undesired products. And moreover, so, the media constituents whichever we are going to add for designing the for the fermentation process of a particular product, we should that that component should be consistently available at the same quality throughout the year. So, for example, if you have designed a media in a good manner, but a particular chemical which is not available throughout the year means the purpose is not solved. So, we need each and every components what we are adding in the media should be available at a very economical rate and it should have a consistent quality and available throughout the year. And finally, the major criteria is that while while preparing media and its sterilization stages, it should have very minimal problem. So, if the problem of preparing the media itself becomes difficult means the process also will become difficult. So, for example, if you are to want to do an in situ sterilization in a fermenter, we need the constituents that is the fermentation media components should be thermostable. If for example, if we need certain amino acids to be added as a growth, uh, growth promoters in the medium, these amino acids are sensitive to, to the uh, uh, moisture sterilization. So, what we have to do is we have to do a filtration sterilization then we have to add aseptically to the media. This means becoming the process little bit complicated. And moreover, the media should does not have certain uh, uh, bile salts like that. So, it can form more foam and produces an interference while the product recovery process or during the aeration and purification process. So, these 6 criteria should be taken into consideration before designing a particular fermentation media. This is the core as a starting point of the media designing. So, let us consider a media formulation, how we can go about a media formulation. So, during doing a media formulation, so we have to do certain research activities that means, we, we make certain media in each and every stage 
during the formulation development. That means we design a successful laboratory experiments, then we try it in a pilot scale of the media as a tech transfer, then finally we make the production process. So all these stages, the media should be stable and it should be passed through all these essential stages. So this uh, media, what we have designed during this process, uh, should satisfy basically that it should favor the biomass production. That means the microorganism has to grow comfortably. So if the microorganism grow, then only it forms the product. Otherwise, it doesn't forms the product. So the major concept is that in the media formulation that it should satisfy the need for the biomass and the product formation both together. So let us consider this with an example, how we can make a formulation. So let's consider an aerobic fermentation. So what we are doing is we are adding certain components like a carbon source or other energy source than a nitrogen source, oxygen, hydrogen source and mineral source. Everything we have added and we added a microorganism as an inoculum. So what will be the output is that this microorganism consumes this nutrients and it will grow that it forms a biomass. And meanwhile, as a metabolic process, it gives our product. Then because of this fermentation, it produces a product along with an evolution of carbon dioxide and heat. So this is a simple equation. Generally, to start with any fermentation, we have to come with this simple equation, how the product is going to form through the microbial pathway. So once we understand this equation, then the next work comes to us is that to express everything in a quantitative form. So if I put everything into a quantitative form, that means how much carbon I need, how much nitrogen is needed to form this product. So everything has been expressed in a quantitative form, then we can successfully design and media at an economical manner. So this is the basic idea how the fermentation media can be designed and what are the criteria should be taken into account. So for further making a simplicity, it is better to understand the elemental composition of the product as well as the microorganism. So let us understand little bit about the elemental composition. So a knowledgeable elemental composition of a microorganism will help us to prepare a balanced equation. So what I told is first we design an equation then we understand an elemental composition of the biomass so we can put inside it so thereby it is very easy to balance the equation along with the product so the understanding of this elemental composition is becoming a crucial for making the equation in a perfect manner that in turn help us to develop the media so this information are not easily available so we have to study a particular microorganism or particular strain that we are going to use for the production and we have to have a thorough knowledge of its elemental composition so that we can make the perfect fermentation media recipe. So I have put some example of this elementation composition. So for example, if you take an elemental composition of a bacteria that I have shown in the figure, you can see in the table form. So each and every elements will be required in a particular percentage. So if I take a dry weight of a particular bacteria and I have studied the most of the bacteria will have in this range. So this will help us roughly to come with a particular fermentation media for you. So in this case, you can see the carbon will generally needed in up to 50% because it is the main building block for each and every product and each and every biomolecule present in this uh, uh, microorganism. Then we need a little bit hydrogen that is supplied through water. Then we need a nitrogen source that will be almost uh, double of the hydrogen source generally needed because it is needed for the amino acid and uh, nucleotide production. Then we need other elements like phosphorus, sulfur, sodium, calcium, magnesium, chloride and iron. So all these elements will help to understand this equation in a better manner. So if you see the elemental composition of an yeast, which is the major strain that has been used for the production of the alcohol. So the yeast leads little bit lesser carbon source that is less than 50% where are more or less the other sources will be in the same manner. So, and the third one, which is the elemental composition of fungi, because the fungi are the major source, 
especially for the production of the antibiotics. So, I have put it. So, the fungal source are drastically varies in its elemental composition in terms of each and every aspect, whether it is a carbon, nitrogen or phosphorus. So, this is the basic idea so that we can balance the equation, then we can go for designing the media composition. right? So, in the media composition, there are certain care should be taken of adding certain minerals. So, I have put some one or two example for that purpose. So, some nutrients if we take like uh, potassium or phosphorus, that can be added in a large quantity substantial excess, it does not have a greater impact on the product formation, but sometimes the uh, phosphorus can have it, but generally it does not affect the fermentation process. Whereas, certain elements like zinc and copper, it should be in an exact quantity. That means, it should be uh, at the limiting value. A small excess or small uh, amount which is less will drastically impact the biochemical process because it acts as an uh, cofactors in most of the mechanism, but also it has an ability to form ligands with the enzymes. So, the concentration of these elements should be taken care while designing the fermentation media. So, apart from this, uh, we have to understand about the biochemical pathway of that particular product production strain that the production strain does not have all the abilities to produce all the molecules which is needed for its growth and product formation. So, certain nutrients, certain special nutrients like amino acids, vitamins and nucleotides, if it cannot synthesize that should be supplied from outside. So, these parts should be taken care while calculating along with the elemental composition for designing that fermentation equation for us. So, uh, this is the second part what I have put forward is the understanding of this elemental composition and understanding of the importance of each and every element and understanding of the biochemical pathway will help you more closer towards the design of the particular fermentation media. So, our third part I have discussed on each and every components detailed manner and its importance. So, first we will start with the basic component water. So, everybody knows without water no none of the living cells can survive and moreover the media major component is a water. So, generally we produce a broth media which contains water. So, water is the major source of fermentation and for the media preparation because water supplies two things. One it supplies uh, hydrogen and oxygen apart from that uh, certain waters uh, will carry minerals in a trace quantity. So, the trace elements also get supplied during the fermentation process. So, initially nowadays we get the deionized water or distilled water, but initially we use your raw water which is sterilized and used it, it carries minerals which helps for the brewing as well as some part of uh, most critical, critical part of the mashing also. So, based on the quality of the water, uh, initially we started using for different production purpose. The hard water which is generally contains a high concentration of calcium sulphate uh, is used for the production of Burton bitter beers and Pilston type lodgers. Whereas, the other type of water that is which is having a high carbonate content is generally used for the production of darker beers such as stouts. So, nowadays in the fermentation media, we does not uh, consider about the quality of water what we are getting because we started preparing the media with the deionized water or distilled water. So, that we can effectively control the elemental composition as well as the pH of the media. So, this is the major part. So, nowadays we use water source only as an hydrogen and oxygen source and for the diluting of the media purpose and nothing more than that. So, initially it was also used as a components of trace elements also. So, the second major component what we need from after water is the energy source because the energy source is the driving driving source for the metabolic process of the microorganism. 
So, there are different types of energy source are available to the microorganism. So, this energy source can be obtained from either from a light in a photosynthetic bacteria or phototrophs we can simply call as otherwise by the oxidation of the chemical components. So, the chemical components may be an organic one we call as chemo organotropes or it may be an inorganic one we can call as a chemolithotropes. But as the fermentation process is concerned the most industrial microorganism or chemo organotropes in nature because they get the energy by the oxidation of the carbon source that is the organic carbon source. So, let us have an insight about the main component of the media since we have studied the elemental composition the carbon source is the major component which constitute almost 50 percent of the media component. So, the carbon is the backbone of the all the organic molecules which is produced inside a bacteria or the fungi or any microorganism also the product. So, let us understand about what are the various carbon sources that we can use in a media preparation. So, the most carbon source major carbon source we include in a media preparation can be a carbohydrate or it may be a lipid or it may be a protein. In certain conditions we can use certain long chain hydrocarbons or methanol also, but mostly we prefer carbohydrate to a certain extent lipids. So, let us understand about the importance of this carbon source, why the carbon source is needed. Since I have already told that it is the backbone of all the organic molecule, biomolecules and vessel as the product, but the carbon source type will determine the at which rate the carbon source can metabolize. For example, if a microorganism producing amylase it can destroy starch which is a carbon source at a fastest rate. If it is not producing amylase then it becomes difficult for degrading this carbon source and getting uh, as a substrate for them and producing the product. So, the types and the nature of the carbon source becomes a core especially it has a greater influence in the formation of product based on the rate of its metabolic product. So, the carbon source if metabolizes at a faster rate it forms a product at a faster rate. If it is slower rate then it becomes a that is why, uh, why I will give provide an another lecture on this aspect that how we can optimize these carbon sources in my next lecture you can see it. So, the importance of carbon source is directly linked with the formation of the product. So, generally a microorganism which is uh, having a fast rate of growth that means fast doubling right then it needs a higher concentration of the metabolized sugars. So, which can form the product, but this will lead to the formation of a lesser secondary metabolites in nature right. So, the main product of the fermentation process you see it majorly depends upon the carbon source because the carbon source and its metabolic pathway only leads to the formation of the product. So, it has a direct link with the carbon source. So, the type of carbon source as well as the purity of the carbon source will determine the product formation. So, let us consider that uh, while selecting a carbon source we have to take in account about the purity state of the carbon source. For example, if a carbon source contains a metal ions what happen is that this metal ions can interfere with your production process either it can enhance the production process otherwise it can down regulate the production process. So, for example, certain metal ions which is uh, present along with the carbon source sometimes it is needed for the production. In this example I have told about the citric acid fermentation needs an impure carbon source for the better yield rather than a pure one. So, since the carbon source is a most critical component of our fermentation media, so we have to link into the sixth criteria while we are studying that. So, what other ways this nutrients will have an impact in our other process. So, let us understand the effect of sterilization on carbon. So, generally the carbon source will have an more effect in the various type of sterilization process. So, certain carbohydrates or lipids can stable with in situ sterilization like autoclaving whereas, certain carbohydrates like sucrose are not 
are sensible to this type of fermentation process. So, it should be filtered and it can be added to the fermentation media. So, the sugars generally sometimes carrying impurity like metal ions. What happens is that it can cause some trouble during the sterilization process also. For example, let's consider a sugar is sterilized along with an other media components such as protein which contains amino acids that means it contains an ammonium ion. So, what happens is that during the sterilization process it can interact and it can evolve nitrogen gases and which can inhibit the growth of the microorganism. So, the care should be taken during the sterilization process of each and every type of carbon source. So, next part we will little bit get an insight about the commonly used carbon source. So, the most commonly used carbon source I have already told you either it may be a carbohydrate or it may be an oil and fats that is the lipids and third it may be a hydrocarbons and its derivatives. So, out of this the most commonly used is the carbohydrate. So, in carbohydrate the most preferred is the starch. So, why the starch is preferred is that uh, starch is easily available through our food products. The most commonly used carbon source for fermentation is carbohydrate and most preferable is the starch. So, the starch can be easily obtained from the maize grain or any other grain sources and moreover starch may also readily hydrolyzed by dilute acids and enzymes to a variety of glucose preparation. So, starch can be hydrolyzed by dilute acids and enzymes uh, like an HCl at a particular temperature or we can use an enzymes like amylase which can break down this polysaccharides into a disaccharides or a monosaccharides. So, that can be used as effectively as a media. For example, if you see a hydrolyzed cassava starch is used as a major carbon source for the fermentation of glutamic acid which is a primary metabolite. And the second type of carbon source most commonly used is the malt which is the first one of the fermentation because the malt grinds the yeast was added and the alcohol was produced. So, the second major one is the malt. So, the malt is obtained from a barley grinds. So, how it is obtained is the uh, partially germinated barley grinds is uh, heat treated to produce this malt. So, this malt carries different types of sugars apart from the starch. So, each type of sugar is very helpful for the product formation. So, the malt has been majorly used as a major substrate for the fermentation of especially the beers and larger production. So, nowadays uh, uh, since we are more going towards to the preparation of a defined media, so the starch and malt is no longer used but it has been narrowed down to exact carbohydrate source. So, one of the major carbohydrate source is the sucrose. So, the sucrose is a disaccharide which can be easily obtained from the uh, sugar can in a sugar industry either from a sugar can or a sugar beet we can get it. So, this is purified and finally, it can be used for our production process in a defined media preparation. But it becomes little bit costly in nature. So, nowadays if you see the alcohol fermentation rather than using starch or malt the industry is preferring the byproduct of the sucrose industry, sucrose manufacturing industry. So, it produces certain byproducts like beet or can molasses. So, which carries a particular concentration of sucrose that can be easily used for the production of alcohol. Even though it is a byproduct of this sugar can industry this can be helpful for the production of a alcohol. So, which is a less value one, but it needs in a high value manner. So, still it has certain problem, especially the impurities of this uh, beet or can molasses, which becomes a problem in the later stage, that is the downstreaming stage, that is the purification of the alcohol. So, this becomes a complicated one. So, later on there are other carbon sources which has been used. So, one of the thing is the corn strip liquor. So, the corn strip liquor was initially used as a nitrogen source, but it also has certain uh, carbohydrates. So, actually the corn strip liquor is a byproduct of the starch extraction from the maize. So, while extracting the starch from the maize we get a corn strip liquor. 
So, this corn strip liquor as I have told it is majorly contains the nitrogen source, but apart from this it carries lactic acid certain reducing sugars and complex polysaccharides make it use as a, both as a carbon as well as a nitrogen source. So, the second type of the carbon source is the lipids, this is majorly an oils and fats. So, certain vegetable oils that we can use as a carbon source especially olive oil, maize oil, cotton seed oil or linseed oil or soya bean oil because these uh, oils will carry a fatty acid especially the oleic, linoleic or linolenic acid which is majorly made up of more carbon uh, more carbon bonds, more carbon C16, C17 carbons will be present in each fatty acid. So, it becomes a rich source of carbohydrate, sorry rich source of carbon. So, but the cost if you see with the carbohydrate it is more or less comparable, but the advantage with this oil is that first thing is that it requires less volume. So, for example, if I want to prefer a carbon source between a carbohydrate and oil, I will consider the volume of the fermentation media. So, the carbohydrates and further dilution will produce a more volume of fermentation media compared to the oil sources. So, ratio wise if you see that uh, 2.4 times less volume is required for the oil when compared to produce the same with the carbohydrate especially the glucose. So, for example, if you take that the volume advantage is 1.2 24 decimeter cube of soya bean oil can produce about 5 decimeter cube of glucose at 50 percent weight by weight solution. So, we can drastically reduce the volume of the fermentation media. Moreover, the second advantage what the oil is having is that it is anti foaming property because during the agitation what happen is that the media composition will form foam. So, this foam will fill the container and it can have an uh, very problematic condition in the product formation. This addition of this oil will reduces this foaming property that it acts as an anti foaming agent. For example, if you see that methyl oleate has been used as a sole carbon source in the production of cephalosporin which have both the properties as a carbon source as an anti foaming property. So, the third major carbon source is the hydrocarbons and its derivatives, but it is less used especially certain N alkanes has been preferred for the production of amino acids, organic acid, vitamins and antibiotics, but not used in a large fashion right. The second component is the sorry in our case it is the third component first we have talked about water second is the carbon source and third is the nitrogen source. So, the nitrogen source is very important because the nitrogen source will provide an environment especially for the product formation. So, for industrial fermentation process the microorganism can consume the nitrogen source either from organic or inorganic source. So, as an inorganic nitrogen source we can supply in the form of ammonia which has some other added advantages like pH maintenance and also we can supply in the form of ammonium salts such as nitrates. So, let us discuss first about the ammonia. So, ammonia can be directly added into the media. The major advantage is that ammonia can regulate the pH of the media and it can be used as a direct major nitrogen source and it is in a very defined manner. So, nowadays the ammonia has been used in the commercial production of serum albumin from Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And the second inorganic source is the ammonium salts. So, ammonium salts can be ammonium sulphate or ammonium nitrate based upon our fermentation process we can use this both the sources. But there are certain different condition each source will produce. The ammonium sulphate will produce an acidic condition. So, why how this produces an acidic condition is during the process once the ammonium ion is liberated then the remaining sulphate will form say becomes a free acid and this reduces the pH of the medium. So, whereas the ammonium nitrate will first cause an acidic drift because the ammonium ion is liberated then the acidic drift is happen later on it can lead to alkaline drift because of that ammonium ion. So, this can be used as an uh, nit uh, nitrogen source majorly, 
but uh, this ammonia and inorganic nitrogen salts especially the ammonium salts are generally preferred in a defined fermentation media if you are looking into an uh, complex fermentation media the organic nitrogen source is mostly preferred out of this is the amino acid or urea so both are rich source in um, nitrogen so this can produce uh, satisfy all the requirements for the growth of the microorganism so if you add an amino acid or urea into a media what the another advantage is that the instead of synthesizing the amino acid through its metabolic pathway the microorganism can take directly the amino acid as a nutrient from its surrounding and the metabolic process will become a faster manner the commonly and most cheap organic nitrogen source which is available nowadays is the soya bean hydrolysate so you can see each and every fermentation process the soya bean hydrolysate might be added it will be added as a chief nitrogen source so apart from this we can also add certain proteins uh, such as we can also use a corn strip liquor or soya meal or peanut meal everything will produce a, will favors the nitrogen formation but the problem in the nitrogen is that the amount of nitrogen will severely affects the product formation so there are certain factors which influence the selection of this nitrogen source so if you see ammonia and ammonium nitrate are preferred nitrogen source because we can control it so only for controlling a particular fermentation process we can prefer this inorganic nitrogen sources but if you add an organic nitrogen source it becomes little bit difficult for us because uh, the microorganism carries an enzyme called nitrate reductase so this nitrate reductase converts the nitrate into an ammonium ion so by if it produces this ammonium ion if i add an ammonia which is will be repressed and the production process will halt for example if we take an antibiotic production by an fungi or an any microorganism it will be totally influenced by the type and concentration of this nitrogen source because antibiotic production what happens the microorganism will get inhibited by rapidly utilizing this nitrogen source once it gets a free nitrogen source it consumes and it grows and what happens the nitrogen gets depleted so the microorganism halts its growth because i already told that nitrogen is the chief source for the amino acid that is the protein formation as well as the nucleotide formation because it carries the nitrogen bases right so sometimes we can use ammonium chloride and ammonium sulfide as a nitrogen source but the major problem i have already told that it produces an acidic drift so this acidic drift can be overcome by replacing this uh, ammonium sulfate and chloride with ammonium succinate because it is a weak acid so it doesn't alters the ph that much so apart from this uh, what happens is that certain less phosphate buffer medium can be used by supplying with ammonia so this favors the production of the secondary metabolite right so this or the major importance of this nitrogen so next is the minerals so the minerals can be of two types maybe if it is required in little bit large quantities then we call it as a minor elements if it is required in very less quantity then we call it as a trace elements so all microorganism requires this mineral as a cofactor for its metabolic process so for the growth and metabolism the microbial cells needs minerals so i told the minor elements is that certain elements which are required in milligram quantities for example magnesium phosphorus potassium sulfur calcium and chlorine so this is needed for majority of the uh, maintaining of the cell ionic concentration then it also helps in the isotonic concentration of the microorganism so it should be added as a distinct components into the media and the trace elements so i told there are certain trace elements which can be contaminated through water or present as an impurity from other minerals like yeah, molasses or corn strip liquor like that so the principal trace elements are cobalt copper iron manganese molybdenum and zinc 
So, these are required in very less quantities, but generally no need to add this trace elements because it forms a, comes as an impurity of the major ingredients. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, if you see the importance of these elements is that I already told you, these elements are critical especially in the enzymatic reaction because it uh, all the metabolic process apart from enzymes it needs cofactors. So, these cofactors are supplied by the elements. For example, if you add a calcium salt what happened? It precipitate the phosphate which it indirectly influence the production of the streptomycin. So, in streptomycin production the amount of phosphate is very critical. If more phosphate is present it inhibits the production process. So, in that condition if you add calcium as a minor element, it will precipitate out then we get a streptomycin in a better yield. Similarly, I have already told while in the elemental composition that certain elements should be kept in, in a limiting play, limiting amount because they are more critical for the metabolic activity, a little bit high above its concentration can become toxic to the cell. So, these are the major components that we can comfortably construct a fermentation media because it supports the growth of the microorganism. By supporting the growth of the microorganism, it helps to favor the product formation. But for the fermentation media is concerned, we need certain other chemicals to be included in the media like chelators, growth promoters, growth inducers like that we have to supply it. So, one of the thing is the chelators. So, if you see the chelators, many media cannot be prepared or autoclaved without the formation of visible precipitate. So, what happen is the metal ions is present in a media, if I autoclave it, it becomes a precipitated form. So, to avoid this one what we can do is, we can add chelates and insoluble metal phosphates we can add it it can form by the addition of these chelates. The most commonly used chelators is the EDTA, citric acid or polyphosphatases. So, the importance of these chelators is that these chelates forms complex with the metal ions and this complex it can be easily utilized by the microorganism rather than taking the ions itself. What happens is that the ions can not be taken directly by the microorganism because of this ionized state transferring through the membrane becomes difficult. If it is forms a chelate, it becomes an unionized one. So, it can easily transfer through the membrane and consumed by the microorganism. So, it favors the rate of the formation of our product. So, but the chelating agents should be kept in a particular limit. Otherwise, what happens is that it conforms chelate with the enzymes and it stops the growth of the microorganism. The second additional component apart from the major, minor and trace elements and water, what we have to add is the growth factors. So, growth factors are nothing but certain microorganism cannot able to produce certain chemical on its own. These chemicals should be supplied from outside. So, these factors we call as a growth factors. So, this can be either an amino acid or a vitamin or a particular fatty acids or steroids. So, if I add this growth factors, what happened? The rate of product formation can be enhanced. And the third one is the buffers. So, buffers, if you see that each microorganism or the product stability will depend upon the pH of the medium. So, to control the pH of the medium, that is the hydrogen ion concentration of the medium. So, we need to add buffers to maintain the stability of the product as well as the growth of the microorganism. For example, the bacteria can better grow at the pH 6 to 8, whereas the fungi can grow at the pH around 4 to 5. So, what happens if the pH changes, the growth will get inhibited, thereby the product formation will also stop. And moreover, sometimes the product can form at a particular optimal growth condition, but it may be instable. So, during this time, we have to adjust the pH. So, we to, new to, to get an optimum productivity, we have to maintain a pH at a particular level. So, to achieve this, we can add certain compounds which can be 
itself acts as a buffer for example if you take an ammonia so ammonia will acts as a buffer as a producing a basic ph and also it can also act as a nitrogen source similarly we can add calcium carbonate or calcium phosphate which also produce the buffering environment but nowadays we are no longer using this one so we are adjusting this one by means of uh, supplying the acid and bases because we have certain problem with these compounds for example if you add a calcium phosphate what happens i have already told you that production of streptomycin which is an antibiotic a secondary metabolite can be inhibited by the highest level of this phosphate so to balance all these things we need to supply in other manner to make this buffering environment so to balance the carbon nitrogen source as well as other mineral source it is better to supply the buffers in different manner so nowadays i have told that we will supply to maintain the ph to bring into the basic environment we can add sodium hydroxide or to bring to acidic environment we can add sulfuric acid then the fourth one is the precursors so if you see the precursors what is mean by a precursors is that precursors are certain chemicals that are added at a particular stage during the production process so this type of production process we can called as a fed batch process so if we add this precursors it can lead to the formation of the desired product for example if we are producing a penicillin the penicillin chrysogenum by utilizing the substrate will form a beta lactam drink that means it forms a penicillin drink but what we need is we need a benzyl penicillin means we have to add it a particular precursor for example so if we use a nitrogen source like corp uh, constip liquor which carries phenyl ethyl amine this can work as a precursor this phenyl ethyl amine will get incorporated with the penicillin and forms penicillin g but uh, most of the cases we cannot add the constip liquor because sometimes it can have a adverse effect with the penicillin chrysogenum so we add phenyl acetic acid also as a precursor so it can form the benzyl penicillin so i have put more example on this precursors uh, to get the penicillin v we can add phenoxyacetic acid or chlorotetracycline we can add chloride for grisophilvin also we have to add chloride as a precursor then for l isoleucine we have to add d309 as a precursor so the precursors will help to get the desired product so apart from this there are another two things that we can supply to fasten up the production rate one is an inducer and second is a produce uh, promoter so if you see inducers so these are a certain group of enzymes which can be stimulated by adding a particular substrate if i add a particular substrate in a media the microorganism will be induced to produce that particular protein or particular enzyme so this enzymes which is of an industrial importance is produced by means of a inducer so this called as induced enzymes so these inducers are i told generally substrate or substrate analog in nature for example if i want amylase then what i have to do is i have to add starch into the media so the microorganism get sensitive with the starch and produce amylase this will break the starch molecule similarly if we need the uh, pululinase we have to add maltose if i need pectinase we have to add pectin if we need cellulose we have to add cellulose otherwise if we add any type of protein we will get the proteinase and the second one uh, like inducer the promoter also works but the promoters if you see that it acts at the genetic level for example the yeast which is a saccharomyces cerevisiae carries a gene along with a promoter called as gal1 so once i add a galactose substrate into the media this gal1 gets stimulated and leads to the gene expression of this gal1 along with the enzyme so we will get the product in a larger manner so these are the major constituents we need it but in certain type of aerobic fermentation we have to supply oxygen from outside 
So, if you see the oxygen requirement, generally the oxygen is the vital component of all the aerobic fermentation because it controls the growth as well as the metabolic production of the product. So, it can be supplied through an aerator channel after filtration. So, this oxygen generally influences the rate of metabolism. It makes the metabolism at a faster rate, higher energy production, then higher product formation. Moreover, oxygen while bubbles through the media, what happens? It, it changes the rheological pattern of the fermentation media. And finally, it also works as an anti foaming agent. So, I think this lecture little bit a lengthy one, but this entire thing you have a better understanding how the fermentation media can be designed, what are the criteria of designing the fermentation media, what are the components of fermentation media in depth along with its importance. So, I think in my next lecture you can understand about the method of optimization of this fermentation media. So, thank you, thank you very much. So, kindly continue watch my lectures through this channel. Thank you very much.